Hello and welcome to this session. In this session, we will talk about priority cues and HIP. Priority cues and HIP are related concepts, but they're not exactly the same. Even though in some places you would see they refer to priority cues as a HIP. In this session, we will cover both HIP and priority cues with a code example. And at the end of this session, we will talk about a possible interview challenge question and its solution that uses both priority cues and HIP. Be sure to watch this video in its entirety so you can understand the interview question and its solution. A priority queue is an abstract data type that supports two main operations, insertion of elements with priority and removal of the elements with the highest or lowest priority. Priority queues does not enforce any particular internal organization or structure for the elements. The highest priority element is removed first. So to sum the properties of priority queue, we can say that every item has a priority associated with it. An element with higher priority is dequeued before an element with the low priority. And if two elements have the same priority, they are served according to the order in the queue. Now let's talk about the operations of priority queues. There are insertion, deletion, and peak, which helps to return the maximum element from max heap or minimum elements from mean heap without deleting the node from the priority queues. There are two different types of priority queues, the ascending order priority queue and the descending order priority queues. The difference between the priority queues and the regular queue is that there is no priority attached to elements in a regular queue. Regular queues goes by the rule of FIFO, the first in, first out, whereas in priority queues, the elements have priority and the elements with higher priority are served first. Now let's talk about the implementation of priority queues. Priority queues can be implemented using the following data structures. It can be array data structure, linked list data structure, heap data structure, and binary search data structure. Now that we understand what priority queues are, let's take a look at heap. A heap, on the other hand, is a specific data structure that can be used to implement a priority queue efficiently. A heap is a binary tree with two main properties. It is a complete binary tree, meaning all levels of the tree are fully filled, except possibly for the last level, which is filled from left to right, and it satisfies the heap property which is that for a max heap, the value of each node is greater than or equal to the values of its children. And for a mean heap, the value of each node is less than or equal to the values of its children. Because of these properties, heap provide efficient access to the maximum or minimum elements, making them ideal for implementing priority queues. The highest or lowest priority elements is always at the root of the heap. So while priority queues and heaps are related, with heaps being one possible implementation of priority queues, they're not exactly the same thing. As mentioned before, priority queues can be implemented using other data structures as well, although heap are commonly used due to their efficiency for this purpose. A good example of this can be a task scheduler. Imagine you have a list of tasks to be executed with different priorities and you need to schedule them in such a way the higher priority tasks are executed before lower priority tasks and tasks with the same priority are executed in the order they were added. Now let's look at a code for a real world problem that uses priority queue. Assume you're given a list of tasks to be executed. Each task has an associated priority represented by an integer. Higher priority tasks should be executed before lower priority tasks. Tasks with the same priority should be executed in the order they were added. You're responsible for implementing a task scheduler that efficiently schedules tasks based on their priorities. Let's look at this code. By the way, I have utilized uh, Java to solve this problem. So let's start by importing the priority queue library, and then we're going to define a class named task that represents a task with two attributes, uh, the priority, which is an integer, and the name, which is a string. Uh, this will indicate that 
the instances of a task class can be compared to each other using the natural ordering defined by the class itself. So to do this first, we'll declare a new class named task. Uh, the line that says implement comparable task indicates that the task class implements the comparable interface with task as the type parameter. The comparable interface is used to define a natural ordering for the objects of a class. By implementing the comparable, the task class specifies how instances of a task can be compared to each other for the purpose of ordering. And then the int priority declares an integer field named priority inside the task class. This field represents the priority of the task. And the string name declares a string field named name inside the task class. This field represents the name of the task. Now, this part of the code is an implementation of the compare to method from the comparable interface, which was mentioned earlier when we were discussing the implement comparable task line. Overall, this compare to method is used to define the natural ordering of task objects based on their priorities. Higher priority tasks are considered less than lower priority tasks and within the tasks of the same priority, the order is maintained based on when they were added. So let's break it down. By the way, the, the overwrite, the assign overwrite that I have over there, this notation um, indicates that the method is overwriting a method from a superclass um, or the interface. In this case, it's overwriting the compared to method declared in the compared to interface. And the public int compared to task other method is for is from the comparable interface and it compares the current task object this with another task object called other and it returns an integer value that indicates the relationship or the relative ordering of the two objects. Now the inside method um, compares the priority of the two tasks using this dot priority which is the priority of the task uh, of the current task and other priority which is the priority of the other task. So here we're going to um, compare it and we're going to say if this priority is not equal to the other priority, other dot priority, uh, meaning the priorities are different, it will return a positive integer indicating that the other task should come before this current task. If the priorities are the same, it returns zero indicating that the tasks have the same priority and should maintain their original order which is the five for the first in first out. Now this other part of the code defines a two string method within a task class which means we are specifying how instance of a task class should be represented as a string when they're printed or converted to a string explicitly. And this is particularly because and useful for debugging or displaying information about objects in a human readable um, format. And here is our main, which demonstrates how to use a priority queue. Uh, we're using the priority queue to schedule and execute tasks based on their priorities, ensuring that the higher priority tasks are executed before lower priority tasks. That was the whole reason we're doing this right now. So um, let's take a look at this lines of code in here. The, uh, the priority queue um, task pq equal the new priority queue. This line creates a priority queue named pq to store task object. The task class was defined earlier. That's that's basically what we did earlier. And now for the pq.offer new task, all of those lines, uh, these are going to add tasks to the priority queue. Each task is created using the task constructor and added to the queue using the offer met method. The tasks are added with different priorities, like one, two, three, whatever the prior priority is. And using a while loop, we will check if the priority queue is empty or not. This loop will continue as long as the priority queue is not empty. And then now in, inside of the loop, the, the pull method is used to remove and retrieve the task with the highest priority, which by the way is the lowest value according to the compared to method implemented in the task class up there. And then um, the retrieved task is going to be stored in the task variable. And then we're going to print out um, the result using the system.outprint line. 
This loop will continue until all tasks have been executed and then the program will terminate. And here is the output of the program. As we can see, it demonstrates the execution of tasks in priority order as per the instructions. Now let's look at a potential interview challenge question involving HIP and priority queues. I will use Java to solve it, but remember, you can use any languages you want to solve this since the concept of the data structures remain the same, and it's just a matter of which syntax and language you feel more comfortable with for implementing it. So let's assume you are given a K sorted li linked list and you are tasked with merging the K sorted linked lists into one sorted linked list and return it. So you have a couple of different linked lists and you want to just merge them together and create one sorted list. The keyword here is sorted. This will be an ideal problem to be solved with heap and priority queues because of their properties. Keep in mind, usually employers, when they give you a challenge question, they give you the input and the desired output, output and ask you uh, what would be the most efficient way to solve it for you to achieve the desired output. So to solve this problem, this is what we're going to be doing, and then we're going to look at the code. Uh, we use a min heap priority queue to keep track of the minimum node among all the heads of the K sorted list. We're going to uh, first add all the heads of the sorted list to the min heap. Then in each iteration, we extract the node with the smallest value from the min heap and add it to the merged list. We then move the pointer of the selected list one step forward and add the next node to the min heap if it exists. We continue this process until the min heap is empty and we have merged all the lists together. Since the efficiency is in question, the time complexity becomes very important. The time complexity of this solution is O n log of k, where n is the total number of the elements across all lists and k is the number of lists. And this is how the class looks like. I have added detailed comments so you can better understand what each line of code does. Feel free to pause and look at it. And this is how the main method looks like. Again, I add a detailed comment so you can understand what each line of code does. Finally, this is the output of the program, which clearly shows that we now have one sorted list. Mission accomplished. This will conclude this session. Let me know if you have any questions.